meant to this group. So what am I to everyone? The bravest among us. <laughs> A moral compass. Courage is not the absence of fear, Jadimir. It's not that. He constantly calls me a coward. The fucking knight that he's now training with was saying I had a coward's tactics. And? How does that make me the bravest? Because you face your fears head on every day. And I would do anything to see them not come to fruition. Case in point. Mira comes up to you, Jedimir, and hands you a bottle of what you assume to be some sort of alcohol. I give it back. <laughs> Not help. I... As much as I don't like being in my own head terribly much, I don't like it being blurred by something else. Fair enough. You... Also, I get mad and punchy. So? So does everyone. <laughs> Jedimir. Nothing wrong with that. There is no need for you to shoulder everything on your own. You oh, don't I... have to be the smooth-talking, suave uh, Chedimir of Froststone that gets the world to follow your beck and call. You don't have to be the best, best there ever was with a sword. You don't have to be the arcane caster, the cleric, the, the healer. It's no fucking wonder you're struggling when you're spreading yourself that thin. You have a valuable skill set. Sharpen that. You seem to be invested in that mark. So look into it. Indeed. Well, I'll tell you how that goes after I sleep, I say in quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> that will not be necessary. Hmm. You guys look over at the glowing eyes shouting at you from be like Where the goddamn did you come? Oh, what the what the hell is that? I throw a spear at it. Don't <laughs> <laughs> they have an immensely high AC somewhere. <laughs> I just don't know which of your fr There are too many weapons in your team! How many, how many weapons does Marshall have? I think it's a double digit. More 18. than 20. 18? Oh, God. Oh, That's you know what? I do have more now. Because <laughs> I got a hand back saying no vine. Yeah, boy. Make it 20. I honestly don't. I'm just going to use a fucking trend. Fuck it. Sure. Luckily, it doesn't hit even with a 19. Why is it it's wrong advantage? Normal. Eh, it doesn't particularly matter. 19 was the first number, anyways. Yeah. <sighs> I will forgive you the slight once. Do not strike again. Mira <laughs> just takes a swing from the bottle. Okay, I mean, that's fair, but you gotta think you had a, you had a huge growing eye. That is pretty. It's a set of eyes. It's a set of eyes. Yeah. Yeah, next time. We can maybe... attack my things all the time! Okay, yeah, next time, alert me, maybe, before making your presence known. He's very considerate. You can't honest. really tell the gender of this person, by the way. Yeah, yeah. If it's I remember like how you male, the female. voice, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a bit similar. Yeah. I mean, I just assume that's all elves and fairies. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. The Oathkeeper comes up to you. Hi. She looks over at Aldrich and back at you. Your companion speaks... Well. Power is worthless if you have no purpose to it. Joining a court is not for the weak of heart. Or of conviction. I will not bother teaching you if you are Flimsy. Uh, 
then I simply won't be. That remains to be seen. There's more to that mark than magic. There's more to fighting than swinging a sword. And there's more to your character than the words coming out of your mouth. If I might add... She looks at you. Chetamir... In my own view... The source of my strength. It's not the arcane spark in my blood or having Vanitas at my side. Those things certainly help, but the true source of my strength is my singular purpose. The one thing that matters in my life more than anything else. I think it's even obvious to you what that is. Hmm. Do, you, do you want me to say, like, what? I am very curious what you think it is. <laughs> I'm afraid to answer now. I oh, just I'm... say it. What? <laughs> yes. Away. Yes. I feel like they're both pretty tied. Family. Yes. All right. I will stop at nothing to ensure that Owen has a future. You hear that the crackling an... of energy from Owen's direction as you say this. I will stop at nothing to ensure that there's an <laughs> that there's an after. <laughs> Partial. <laughs> go on, Frey, go on. But there is an after for us. All of us. The longer that after is, the better. You know, you're a lot better Why? than your initial impression of some thief from Silphwall. Masks are very useful. Hmm. Identity is fluid. So ask yourself, Chetamir, what is your purpose? Why do you want to help? Why is it important? Because I know pain and loss and I don't want others to feel it. I know what it's like to hurt and I don't... I want others to not have to deal with that if I can prevent it. What is the most effective way to ensure that? Also, mm. how broadly do you want to appeal? Do you want to shield those near you or the whole world? That's a really good question. Maybe you should answer that. Hey. Not now. Not now. But think about it, yeah? Okay, cool. Who are you fighting for and why? Okay. I'll work on that. It is my sincere belief that if you can find your purpose, if you can find a, a true goal, the meaning behind all of it, or in all of it, your perspective just might change. And so will your success. Okay. Jennifer is just staying there with a bit more confidence. At the beginning of this conversation, she was bleh. just bleh. Now she actually has more confidence. 
a bit of a step in a stride, stride in a step, whatever the fuck. Uh, she <laughs> turns to the figure. What'd you call them? A oathkeeper. Oathkeeper, thank you. I believe. Correct. This is one of the beings in the Feywilds you should never get on the wrong side of. Because if you have, that means you have disgraced you, your line, and your very essence. <laughs> that being said, they're as lawful as can be. Mm -hmm. No matter how annoyed an Oathkeeper might be with someone, they will not do anything against them. Less of course, some more nefarious Oathkeepers might set things up. But they don't use them time for that. Your training begins now. Marshall just puts a hand on Chenomir's shoulder. Show him that you are worth it. Yeah. It is not my place to judge whether you are worth it or not. I'm here on orders. You notice that the figure has a very peculiar looking double sided and pointed spear. Hmm. And Marshall, the design of it's a bit familiar to you. Slightly, if not done in a much more elegant, streamlined, and fairy essence. It's a spear, which has hooks and like on it. Almost like a halberd, but it's still sort of a pike. And it's very good for catching people by their legs, clothes, etc. Or into their flesh. It's meant to catch slaves. It's a catch pole. Something like that. It is still a spear, though. I mean, their and job is to bring fuckers in. Let's go. That's exactly it. Yeah. Kill them or bring them in. This can do both. He has his spear. So? Mark is free form. What do you wish it to do? There is no wrong answer here. Yeah, just, just give Garth slash Chedimir a second to think. The figure will regard you in silence and an immensely intent full stare. Because they know nothing else. I have one of two ideas. Either just an ice barrier or some kind of movement. Like some kind of swap places thing, but I feel like that last one is a little much. Because <laughs> the idea that I have is either be able to make something that can protect others, or be able to swap places to protect them. I think I'm gonna start with the barrier one, just because it's something she could potentially do as just having this mark go. So... Um... Create... Uh, a protective barrier around someone. Preferably have some distance to it. I won't answer anything. This is all in character. <laughs> so I... <laughs> she attempts to do so. Say it with confidence. Fine. What do you want? I'll make a goddamn impenetrable barrier of ice. <laughs> And At your current level, impenetrable, it would be a misnomer. Impenetrable. <laughs> that was guard. But you get the gist of it. Protective. Able to be... It can be made impenetrable, distance. but it will be immensely ephemeral. Garth doesn't know what ephemeral means. Short-lasting. That could still be useful. It will last but an instance. But I suspect that is all you desire of it. For the time being, yeah. Hold out your arm. I do so. You hold like, your uh, hand like, up. Do they want me to just like hold out my arm straight, or just like hold it out like I'm gonna do an Eldritch Blast? <laughs> hold it out as in like you're gonna receive something. Sure, I can do that. The figure then pulls out a knife, starts to stab your hand. Are you serious? <laughs> It stops less than an inch from your hand. And you notice that it is stopped for multiple reasons. First of which is that they just simply never came in contact with you. 
You also notice that a layer of frost developed over your hand. Survival instinct method of protecting it. The first step. They put away the dagger. Mm -hmm. It's not exactly... As they pull the dagger away, it sort of lingers on your hand. Just kind of like... Upon yourself, it shall last. Mm -hmm. To cast it outward. For another. That is the task of the night. Hmm. That's weird. It's like... I didn't try? It just happened. Then your desire to protect others shall have to kick in. Or hmm. I shall kill them. I just give them a death glare. <laughs> They don't seem at all phased by it. I figure. I figure this guy could probably kill all of us without trying. Honestly, that doesn't stop Chairman from getting pissed at him. You assume that there's Oath Keepers alone. That too. They don't operate on. Hmm. Like a seeker. Weird. We will start protecting yourself. Then we move on to others. Mm -hmm. You have until dawn. It is sunset now. If you fail, I will throw all my effort to the last throws. Fine. <laughs> this astral, like, line. A bit reminiscent to, like, the ones the flock had, except this is, like, much thinner and brighter. We will not start with my spear. We will start with this. Go a distance. And they, she points off a ways a bit. They go like 60, 80 feet out. Face me. Alright. As you turn. It's like a whip made of piano wire crackling with energy. That sounds terrifying. Oh no, a uh, fun thing about these Oathkeepers, their method, there's a there's a specific fighting style associated with them using that fire. Steve. Grappling people, choking them, strangulating them out, pulling them up tree branches to stab them to death, you know, the usual execution methods. Strangulating them out. It also makes sense. usual, but uh, it's definitely yeah. an execution method. Hmm. It's also a very handy method to use another enemy <laughs> as a method of grappling. As you yes. swing around them in yes. like this cool circle. Yep. That's really cool. They're very much like Assassin's Creed 3 ing up people. Anyways, uh. Never played that one. Just kidding. Assassin's Creed 3 sucks. I don't buy it. Don't touch it. Don't even look at it. Anyways, though. <sighs> I'm not gonna kill you, narrative, like, <laughs> in mechanics, so we'll run to the narrative of this. Hmm. And I'm not gonna literally kill someone. Mechanically, by having you roll until you succeed at until dawn. Hmm. We're better than that. That being said, uh, roll me a constitution saving throw. Really, really wishing I had taken resilience. <laughs> Where's that button? I need it. No, I need it. Help. <laughs> well, I'll just get like a few more levels in new ranger and you'll be fine. I need three, but I need to get the alchemist. Anyways, I'm lingering on this. Get two. Nevi will give you her inspiration. Okay. Thank you. <gasps> it's strangely cathartic. Oh, at ten. Nice. It's strangely cathartic seeing everyone comfort someone out when she's not the target. Tar target? 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 <laughs> yeah, target. Leave me alone. Yeah. Target. And oh, Admiral the... Target. Admiral Target, yeah. <laughs> you do not gain a level of exhaustion. Go, you. <laughs> And no one even needs to keep watch because you and the Oath Keeper will be up all night. Apparently getting literally and figuratively whipped into shape. Marshall <laughs> makes the constitution saving throw. Training with uh, Dominic, I'm assuming. Come out the woods. Real tired. Two days, no sleep. Look at Chatimir. Thumbs up. Go back to work. Thumbs it's up, really man. weird. The Oath the Oath Keeper and Dominic regard each other, and there's a level of respect between them. To the point that Dominic doesn't say anything and the Oath Keeper doesn't say anything. 
Please continue <laughs> on with your respective trainings. Heathen? 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 <laughs> well, no. Uh, in technicality, an Oathkeeper is totally fine with... Especially knights. Honorable knights? Definitely. Perfect for an Oathkeeper. And knights know about Oathkeepers. Might be evil, but in technicality, they are. In the of things. So, they're neutral to each other. They're not... I don't think in any way... They're happy... Well, Dominic isn't particularly happy at the fairy. The fairy doesn't give a shit. But again, they're polite and respectful enough towards each other to ignore the other ones. Yeah. Like, basically, I don't got beef with you, so we cool. <laughs> well, in the case of Dominic, I, I have beef with you, but at the same time... <laughs> I can respect that you go about your way. <laughs> Okay. Wait, isn't that reminds me of a specific part from that book you read? The uh Dresden Files. Yeah, that book. Uh happens a lot in Dresden Files. Yeah. I respect that you do this, but you have to respect that I will kick your ass or something along those lines. Yep, uh, uh gentleman Johnny Marcone says that to Harry Dresden in the very first book. Boy, that's a name. That is the most mafia stick name. Besides yeah, Al Capone that... himself. He's also a great villain. And I fucking love him. But yeah, uh yeah, he says the same thing to Harry Dresden. They look into each other's souls and see what the other one's worth, literally. I respect that you're honorable, but at the same time, don't get in my way. <laughs> I don't want to kick your ass, but I will. Yeah, it's, they know that the other one will never give up. So the best they can do is just not get in each other's way and have two unstoppable forces meet. Same deal here. So yeah. Eventually, uh, the Oath Keeper, he ends up actually trying to whip at Marshall, and Dominic allows this, and <laughs> says, You gotta dodge enemy blows somehow, might as well be from a fucking fairy. Sometimes there'll be arrows, bolts, spells. Stay focused on what's in front of you. You won't begin to that archer just yet, so kill what's around you first. And have faith that your friend's got your back. And, Chenomary, you managed to uh, do all three of them proud as you successfully, eventually, successfully <laughs> managed to begin. <laughs> Basically, just sort of keeping. For the training, you just keep your hand on the ground, and then a crackling of energy like cracks in the ice just surge along the ground and then <laughs> up here in this very effective but again not long lasting at all it's just you know like like a thunder call calls in mm. thunder which doesn't <laughs> go that far it's yeah. like that it goes away instantly leaving no trace because what's her fair would leave a trace and you manage to protect Marshall the Ladder, ladder, more like end, quarter of the evening. Very tired, but very this ecstatic is, that it worked. <laughs> this is good. The Oathkeeper looks away and she sees that dawn is approaching. This concludes our training for the night. She, you know, her spears just sort of been levitating, floating in us. And she just <laughs> grabs it and walks off into the forest. Are you gonna come back every night? If you wish to continue your training, call with your mark. That's an additional form of training. Will do. Walks off and fades into the dark forest. Dominic just shakes his head as they go. Fucking fairies. It, his gaze ends up on you, Jedimir. Hope it's worth it. He goes over to you, Marshall. That's enough training. I need to... Takes a bit out of me to stay out here. Why? As you say, Master. It's about you. You guys be heading over to that... Affected town. I'll be watching over you. Best of luck. I just realized something as well. Um, 
that I would have liked to have done uh, today. Sure. Uh, I believe there is a life stealing longsword because it's listed in the. Um, yes, Sima has a new thing. Yeah. Yes. You guys trade magic items. Because it's listed, have... it listed under me at the moment. Yeah, I switched it because I thought y'all were cool with it. Uh, that's on me. <clears throat> I thought y'all were going to get to that. Nope. Apparently not. <laughs> no, what, what effectively happened was when the scimitar was in play, I swapped swords with Seema so she has a magical uh, weapon. Which is the life zero long time? Yes. Okay. Good. No, no, it makes sense. Yes. Okay, so Seema is the one with the life zero long. That is correct. Boom. There you go. Backup longsword? What do you have now? If that's a I think the luck blade. Oh, God, oh right. yeah! I forgot about that. Haha, <laughs> the most impactful item. In the that potentially you guys most got. powerful thing we have. Haha. <laughs> potentially the most powerful thing I'm we pretty, have. I'm like ninety-five percent sure that she's fine with it. So okay. who has what? You oh, have the luck a blade. Right, right, right. She has a luck blade, and then Chenomer has the. Short strikes, scimitar, sure, 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 sure. and Marshall has a bajillion weapon. Bajillion weapons, Too many so. weapons. <laughs> Everything. So what, else. what does the life stealer longsword do? Is it a one or two handed? Uh, um, it's a longsword, so it's versatile. It's essentially a longsword. Here, I'll dig up. No. When you get a critical hit, uh, it does three d six additional necrotic damage along with what else it does. That amount of damage gets given to you as temporary HP. Bingo. Uh, okay. Which really works for you because you can drop your uh, crit range from from just twenty to nineteen and twenty. So, and if we get the other knight and you appease them, then you can drop it even lower. Apparently, because that's uh, yeah. stupidly powerful. Nah, I don't know what you're talking about. I love it. Nah. I'm never gonna have it because all of them are gonna fucking hate me. But okay. You just gotta put your your non fairy foot forward. <laughs> What's it labeled under? It's not. It's not actually called a life steal. It's probably like, a, oh, a sword of life steal. I see. Yeah, life steal long sword sounds. Oh, it's like automatically. It. It's automatically just ten. You don't roll for it. Hmm. It's ten damage. I think that's just the average. Oh. No, no. It says an, an extra ten. I don't remember oh. you telling me it was three d six. Or no, ten right here. Right here. Huh. I read that too. I remember reading it because it was. I was like, wait. I think because for sword of wounding, it's like extra fourteen damage. Yeah, but I think if you like zoom in on it or go close to it, it fixes. No, the, yeah. it is the, feasible uh, that at the time roll of twenty one says three d six necrotic. Yeah, it is entirely feasible since we were looking at other swords like uh, a sword of dragon slaying or whatever that it was just like oh that got carried over instead. That's weird. The compendium. In, uh, in the uh, roll 20, that's 3d6 necrotic. And that would make sense, it would be 9 on average. Hold on. Do... Let me check something real quick. Huh. Simon so and the errata. Weird. And this one blind. Nope. I can see. No. No. Nope. And I keep the three D six. Never happens anyway, so I don't mind. Yeah, it's a very rare thing. And the one, I think the one time I got to proc, it was against something that's resistant or not resistant, uh, immune to necrotic damage. Anyways. <laughs> yep. It's the uh, thought that counts. I think it was against like, the flock. Uh. Maybe, I, I can't recall. I find out pretty easily, because I can just check to see if the flock has necrotic resistance. No, it was against House Bellinger, the boss there. I remember that. That happened. Uh, I yeah, think the flock yeah. was actually... The Cursed Alice Vell, yeah. Yes. And because they're, you know, ghosts things, kind of... Uh, Void-based abominations. Or whatever, but... Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you have that, Aldrich. And I would... Um... Because uh, I've never done this with a magic weapon before, but I would uh, transfer Vanadis from the Scout's longsword to the life-stealing one. 
Okay. Because I can make a, a magical weapon my backed weapon. You don't use dex for your... Do you use dex? I use charisma. Nice. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's right. I forgot that. Because I don't I have things memorized. I had a lot, yeah. She's curious as to... The potential complication of inhabiting an already magic. But as you transition, or you, as you have her transition from the Scout Longs or to the new one, the magical sewagery of it, the, the thing that makes that made a magic before Vanitas, actually begins shifting and changing with her entrance, as it were. Change that necrotic damage to force damage. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it makes it much more effective. Yeah, and it forces one least resistant. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Well, necrotic, I think, is like one of the most common. <laughs> yeah. Fire. I mean, things home per so. Yeah. Yeah. Most resisted doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the creatures but, uh, in the devils are now immune to force damage. <laughs> nah. You guys pick your own battles. Like, you guys facing demons is, like, what signed you on for this type of resistance. Just like, oh, if you go into hell, you sign off for fire resistance. <sighs> and maybe a little poison yeah. in there. Yeah. You easily transfer over, Vanitas. She finds the new space to be a bit, a, a bit to to be a bit extra bloodthirsty, but she doesn't mind. Nice. Uh you guys continue the next morning to Devros's quarantine zone. The skies darken. Place just becomes more somber as you see piles of well bodies several large standing pyres to burn said bodies secret and slayers all geared up mass close well relatively closed helmets etc etc but we'll discuss that in more detail next session on Dragon Ball Z <laughs> yeah, next session of Dragon Ball Z. Uh, here's the uh, one from the player handbook. You can transform one magic weapon into your pack weapon by performing a special ritual while you hold the weapon. I, I, uh, you the candles, candles, boy! <laughs> <laughs> Over the course of one hour, <laughs> which can be done during a short rest. You, c you can then dismiss the weapon, shunting it into extra dimensional space, and it appears whenever yes. you create a packed weapon thereafter. Okay. You, can you cannot affect an artifact or sentient weapon in this way. Yeah, we sort of did the inverse of that, <laughs> didn't we? <laughs> yeah. Didn't break the rules! <laughs> Take it. Ew. Again, like, we're well past the point I'm afraid of giving you guys extra fluff and powerful stuff, especially with Night Dominic. Yeah. Is... I think there's a certain point where it's like, okay, that this amount of magical items will change the game. Then after that point, it's like, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Because now you don't have the action economy to use all of this stuff. Yeah, no, like, I I realize that if the, for the knights, their mechanics are immensely reaction-based, I'm like, how many... I feel like some of you have something to do with your reactions, so I feel like you'd be sort of wasting whatever you had already to use this. But at the same time, like, the reaction-based stuff is usually, like, limited use, so I was like, yeah, it wouldn't be, it'd be a special thing. It wouldn't be a constant thing. But yeah, mission accomplished. Question. So. Did. Did. Isabella send anything back in her 25 Oh, that's right. But send is a two-way, two-way spell. Mm -hmm. It is. I totally forgot that. I thought it was one way. I will give you a response, but yes, she did. Dope. Uh, I don't know the exact because obviously work out, but the rough message of it will be. 
I understand. I'm glad you're all safe. I'll rush to the maestros. So we can talk. Ah, that seems fitting. So we can talk slash you can protect me. Stuff like that. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Isabella Alright, way too many right? fucking powerful powers got dropped. Jesus Christ, fucking. Ugh. Oh yeah, thanks for beating Ugh. the ever-loving Christ out of Chetamir O. <laughs> yeah, well, I forgot that. That was like my proc for that thing, is that you had to be basically <laughs> dying. Hey, guess what? <laughs> she hit zero HP. Yeah, I sort of forgot that. It's like I will be a good Oath Keeper, I'm true to my word. Yeah. And I now you've met an Oath Keeper, for realsies. <laughs> Don't piss her, him, them off. You're jumping between pronouns, so... Eh. Yeah, no, I specifically was doing that. I was like, what was the last one I used? I think it was she. Good he job. and him. <laughs> just fuck with everyone. Um, yeah, that was that one was female, though. So, just a future note. Is there any inclination at all about that? No, not really. Oath Keepers Chen live pretty boring lives. Chenmere's looking right up. No, that... I don't know, would that be an upgrade or a downgrade? Anella's an Archfey. Mm. Anella still wins out in terms of rank. Yeah, there you go. Also, she's kind of devoted. <laughs> oh, those are some nice there rolls. These are some nice rolls. Oh, not, not that one so much, but... Eh, um, that would still hit a nice number I'm, of things. I'm, I'm uh, trying to get a crit so I can see if the thing works the way it's supposed just, to. Oh, just spam right. quick in a bunch. The core is advantage. You can turn that off. That, that, that one's a 19. That one's a 19. Rip. Oh, yeah, you don't have it set to 19 crit. You can. You can, though. Yeah. I have the other one. I haven't set that up. Just have it set up. It, it should just be like a crit, ra yeah, or crit range. <laughs> a lot of 15s. Oh, whoops. All right. Wait, I can just do... Oh, why didn't I just do that crit range? Yeah, turn it to one. <laughs> <laughs> I crit all the time. What is critical? You mean my constant damage output? Yes. Right. What? Why is that blue? Uh, because it's a one, a one and a, a green and a red make a blue. So oh, it, it is the lowest on the dice, but put it to count crit, then it's blue. Huh. Well, that's Yeah, fine. so if you have a number, if you rolled dice and one of them was like a one and the other one was like a 20 or like a I don't know, maximum damage dice, let's say 10, one's a one, one's a 10, it'll give you a blue 11. Oh, so it's not rolling for both. It's only rolling for the one-handed. Oh, you have to set it up on your, um, on the second. Oh, I see it. Yeah, it's gonna... Yes. But, yeah, you uh, can change, like, the crit to whatever you want it to be. It's nice. Okay, so we got 1d8 plus 3d6. We got 1d10 plus 3d6. Yep, all right, there we go. Got some good numbers. Perfect. Next one. Now I just have to remember to change it to 20. <laughs> just change it right now! Do it, but is it shouldn't it be 19? Oh, this is without the curse. <laughs> right, right, okay. Alright, uh, before I forget, and